Hey guys, this channel is mainly about cryptocurrency, but today we're starting something a little bit different. I say a little bit different because we're going to learn to program. Now, without code and cryptography, there would be no cryptocurrency. It wouldn't be possible. So if you're quarantined and you have some extra time and you've always wanted to learn a programming language, this coming series is for you. So we're going to be building a console role-playing game, kind of like this here. You'll be able to create an adventurer, create your own adventures to share, and then delve into the dark and see how you do. This series won't be focused on how to make games, though. It's, it's really about C-sharp and good programming principles. You'll learn the syntax, the words to use. You'll learn things like loops and variables and reading and saving to files and using JSON and creating functions and classes and access modifiers and unit testing, etc. Nerd stuff. In addition, you will learn solid principles when writing code. And that's not just a word, but that's actually an acronym for a set of programming principles. And like I said, we're going to go old school with a console game. This is for a couple reasons. Number one, this series is great for anyone that wants to learn C-sharp for any reason, not just for making games. This is not about making games. You'll be able to take what you learn here and apply it in your first job, in your personal projects, your portfolio, your uh, eventual hope to get a job. And number two, I'm kind of an older guy. I love these old school console RPG games. So while this isn't really about making games, we're going to have fun while we learn. And finally, guys, like always, I could really use a subscription, a thumbs up, tell somebody else about this channel, tell somebody else about this series. And that's enough about this stuff. Let's get started. So guys, today we will tackle installing Visual Studio, the program that we will use to make our programs. We'll go over Visual Studio templates. We'll create our program. I'll go over the basic layout of the code and a few basic principles. And that'll be all for this lesson. So if you know all this stuff, feel free to skip ahead to the next lesson. Now let's get started. So first things first, you're going to need a program to write your programs in, and that is Visual Studio 2019. Get the community version. It is free, Community 2019. You'll, you'll want to go to visualstudio.microsoft.com slash vs. Grab Community 19 and install it. Upon installation, it'll ask you what options you want to include. The only one you'll need for this series is the desktop version that has console applications. So go ahead, download it, install it, get that option, and I'll sit here and wait until you're done. Once you've installed it and you open Visual Studio 2019, it should look something like this. You'll say, create a new project. Visual Studio will offer you a number of template projects that have a lot of the back-end coding done for you which will allow you to just do what you want to do on top of the back end plumbing. We're going to pick console app right here. Make sure it says C sharp and not VB or C plus plus. It'll ask you for a project name and a location. Choose that please. Okay guys, once that is done, it'll open up into something like this. Now your screen won't look so big. Your text won't look so big. What I did is I held down control and I used my middle mouse scroll button to make larger text if you need to. Uh, if you don't have the most perfect eyes like me, like myself, feel free to do that as well. But I made it bigger so you can see it. Um, this is the basic layout of Visual Studio, and it's what you'll be used to when you're using when you're creating a program. Over here, we have our solution structure. I will provide this link in the description of the Microsoft documentation on solutions and projects. If you want to read more into it, I would not get bogged down with it too much. A solution is basically just the container of the projects. Your projects are your core programs. A solution is really just like a folder in your file system. It really just tells, tells Visual Studio what projects belong with the application. Your project, on the other hand, and this is, your, this is our project, we only have one inside of this solution. It's the one we made. We can add new projects. I could right click and say, add new project. And that, that would be something that would do maybe something different to this original project, but they would work together and you would want them clumped together to um, work as one. But this is my sole project. It is my startup project. It has my startup entry point. Inside our single project is our single class, program.cs, CS for C-sharp. Classes are the basic building blocks of any program. It is your noun as opposed to your verbs. When performing object-oriented programming, you will make a series of classes, which are like your building blocks for whatever application you're doing. It's the car, it's the person, it's the user. Anything that you would do inside of an application that is the, that is the solid object 
will most likely be what you put inside of a class. The things that you do inside of the class are the verbs. Inside your classes, you'll have properties and methods. Properties being the things that describe the class. So if we had a class called user and it was describing a user of our application, whatever our application is, we might have a property of first name, a property of last name, a property of email address. Our methods are the things that the user can do or things that we want to do to the user, basically kind of like our verbs. So methods for a user class would have get full name would combine your first your last and your middle, not in that order, properties. You might have a method that says send message, which would send an email to the user's email address, although that would probably be better suited in a different class. We'll get into those specifics later on. So here we have our main class called program, and this is our starting entry for every program. Every pro program must have a single starting entry point named main. That is what the backing system that builds what we write into a program is looking for, a static entry point called main. So here we can see it right here in front of us. This is the place where our backing framework that's gonna build the application will look for. And this is, we have basically have one line of code and it's going to write to our console, hello world. Let's see this work. I can either press F5 or I can just click my green arrow up top. It's building the application down here, you can see. You'll, look, you'll use this output window a lot in the future. It's done building, and now it's going to display our one line of code, hello world. Now, remember how I told you when you used a template, it did some back-end stuff for us. With a console application, you really don't need much, but you do need the .NET framework, the .NET Core framework. And you can see over here in our dependencies list, it made a dependency for us to the .NET Core app. What that does is it gives us a huge amount of functionality that Microsoft has written for us in the back end. One of those is the console class. Note the colors over here, whatever this is, green, blue, is a class. If I hover over it with my mouse, you can see I get a little nice little message that says this is a class called program. If I hover over console, see how they're the same colors? This color notes that it is also a class. And you can see it's in class system.console. Now, what is this system dot thing? If I hover over this, what is this RPG console tutorial series dot thing? These are called namespaces. Once again, kind of like a solution, namespaces are basically a way to organize your classes together. You'll see how that works later on. Now, what is this using statement up here? I don't know. I don't like it. I'm going to get rid of it. That's dumb. I have no idea what's going on here. So I'm going to kill it. Now what just happened? You can see that my console color went away and now I have this evil red squiggly line. If I hover over, Visual Studio is great with giving us help. You can see that it says the name console does not exist in the current context. It has no idea what console is. There's a light bulb. I can click on this light bulb. Actually, if I click down here, I'll get the light bulb on this side. Or if I hover, I can get the light bulb right there. Let's click the line. There's the light bulb. Let's click the light bulb and the air. air arrow and it's going to give us suggestions it's going to say well we can generate a type of console so we create our own console class then we can do stuff with it but then we won't have right line because right line is an actual method on the class we can generate a variable console but again that that will mean that the next part right line will be broken or look there's our namespace what it's telling us is there is a console class that exists in the system namespace. Would you like to do, use this? We could click that, and that puts the namespace in front of console, and now it knows what to do. This will work just fine. But if I want to do another console line down here, let's say I want to read. Oh, what, what just happened? Oh, it, you see it has no idea what to do. So I have got to write system.console read line so as you can tell if I I've got two options I can write system every single time I want to reference this console class or I can just put a using statement saying guys we're gonna be using the system namespace now you can see these both went gray because you don't need it because you've got it up here this saying hey you don't need this buddy get rid of it because I know that you're using it 
All right, guys, so now we know about using statements. We know about namespaces. We know about classes. We know about methods, which this is a method. It's a static method. You'll not normally write static methods. We'll go into what static is later. We'll go into return types later. But just know that this is a method. And inside the method, we're doing stuff. We're doing one thing. So guys, that's it for this lesson. Very basic. You're, you're up and running. You're ready to go. In the next video, we'll start building our game. In doing so, we'll learn about variables and methods and return types and access modifiers and some other basic programming principles. It's going to be great. Hope to see you there. Thanks for starting this series. Let me know if there's anything I can do better. I appreciate it. Take it easy. See you then.